Today, our champion, Paul Berger of Hopedale, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Steve Ball of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, on Camelton Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and we're glad that you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candleton Bowling. Total ten balls determining our winner. Each bowler takes home a permanent souvenir. These are provided by Weeks Trophy of Lynn, Massachusetts. Each will also take home some guaranteed prize money. $1,200 is guaranteed. And that's peanuts, of course, to Paul Berger after what he did last week. But anyway, uh, 700 goes to the winner. 350 goes to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously, should they tie, we would split that at $25 apiece. We also have a $50 gift certificate to our marksman of the day. That's from Rotman's Furniture and Carpet Store of Worcester, Massachusetts. Enough of that. Let's talk to today's bowler, shall we? And first of all, we are, we are welcoming Steve Ball, who is on the program for the very first time. Huh? And uh, how long have you been... Candleton bowling. Uh, three years, serious born. I've three been years. Three years. Yep. Hey, boy, that's great. Yep. And you've already won a roll off, and and here you are, and we're giving you an easy guy to start with. Oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, uh, did you uh, did you grow up in this area in Shrewsbury? I'm or? originally from Holden. Holden. I went to school at uh, Wachusett Regional High School. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely heard yep. of that. Did you play sports there? Yeah, I played football, basketball, and baseball. A little golf. How about that? Didn't do any wrestling? Uh, a little weightlifting. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, I can see point, that. Yeah, and uh, you're, you're employed uh, with the Drakes, is that right? Yeah, Drake Bakeries, yep. You, you drive one of those trucks around and, yep. and, and hand out devil dogs and stuff yep. like that? Okay, yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Berger, I'm telling you, the, I mean, people are still talking about what you did. Uh, just And we had got Don Riley to had to revise your high triple to 500 and your high single to 193. You came pretty close to Ed Zernike's 197, too. You you'd had the whole ball of wax almost, huh? Yeah, you got to kind of live out a fantasy, I think, Don. Oh, I, well, well, I'll tell you, I enjoy just being a part of it, I'll tell you that. And uh, I'm also kind of glad, because we're on early this week, that it isn't this week, <laughs> that, that last week we were on at a regular time so everybody could see it. Okay, do you plan on a repeat? Give it a best shot, Don. Okay. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say. All right. Good luck to you, Steve. All right, we'll be underway right after this. Candlepin Bowling is sponsored in part by Cotter True Value, the You Can Do It hardware store. All right, making his first appearance, here is Steve Ball of Shrewsbury. Just missed the head pin on the right side. He leaves four horsemen there, plus the eight pin in back, and over on the right, six and ten. Get up. Oh, nice, Little too full as he punched out the two and eight. All right, so he winds up with a five. And I'm sure, this being his very first appearance on the program, he'll probably be glad to get that first and maybe second box out of the way. Now he has four horsemen left side, plus a tough shot, the nine. He's got a league average right now of 112. He has left the four and seven. However, he has a high single of 187 and a high triple of 432. <laughs> Steve had a 664 in winning his roll off. Now, Paul Berger, who last week rolled a 193 final string and wound up with a high triple of 500, which of course puts him in first place for our True Value Championship show next August. Seven and eight side by side, but he has some wood. Didn't get it. It's a nine. Our home viewer jackpot is now 250, and our high-low jackpot is up to $1,700. Thank you. 
Four horsemen, left side, plus the five and eight. There are still three pins standing. The two, the four, and the eight. And he leaves two. Our challenger, Steve Ball. All right, Steve now has the two, five, and the uh, ten pin. He has wood in between the two and five and one to the right. Too bad it didn't go. Got the two and five and he set a pin flying over, but it didn't quite take down the ten. It's a nine. Six. Just missed. He took out the uh, four pin and he was trying to shave the left side of the two and kick it over to get the six and he just missed it. I mean just. Now Paul Berger. Everything down except the seven pin. He's got it, and he has his first mark. So close to putting a strike on top of that. The only pin up is the 10 pin, and there's a piece of wood which right now, good, it's moving away. It was in a bad spot for him. It looked as if he might have difficulty getting at the 10 pin. All right, he has two in a row. We're gonna pause as we always do after four boxes in the first string to take a check on the scoreboard. With the bonus ball still to be rolled by our defending champion, Paul Berger, the score right now is Berger 46 and ball 33. Come on. He got a break. The 10 pin went down. Now he's looking at the 2 and 7. With wood in front of the 2 and another piece to the right of the 2. He's on the board with his first mark. Now the fill. Looked like it was going to be a much better hit than it turned out to be. He got six, and he has left the five pin as an object pin, but he's got three of the back pins, the eight, nine, and ten behind the five. Piece of wood off to the left, and he will probably try to use that. It worked! It worked! Went over to the side wall, and then the ten collapsed into the nine to make the spear. Now, Paul Berger. Paul has eight as a fill on his spear. He's looking at the four and seven for another, and that would be worth $50 in bonus money. Yes. Last week, Paul earned $900 in bonus money. Now he comes back again with a nine pin drop, a single pin to pick up if the wood stays out of the way. It's the 10 pin. There are three pieces of wood and he would like to have a clear shot at the 10 pin, but he's 
apparently going to have to utilize the piece of wood, and it's not at a very good angle. Okay, he did. So, $100 in bonus money. Let's see now if our challenger, Steve Ball, making his first appearance on our program, can get some bonus money. Right now, he has two marks in a row. That's a thin hit. Just four. Seven pin alone over on the left with wood in front of it. On the right, the four horsemen. That, of course, is the one, three, six, and ten. And in back of that, the nine pin. Oh, too bad. He missed them all. That was trying to be a little too fine. So he leaves two. Al Giglio keeping score as usual on the electronic scoreboard, and Keith Williams keeping score on the big board for the folks who are here. A strip for Steve Ball. Paul Berger. It's eight, but he gets a split. Six and seven with three pieces of wood. Can he sidewall it? He tried. Didn't quite come over. So the bonus stops after four marks in a row. Now he picks up the seven. Don Riley, of course, is our statistician and coordinator. Our crew today, Howie Rouse, Judy Guile, Kevin McSheffrey, John Rosenfeld, and in post-production videotape, George Ellard. Single pin to pick up is the 10, but there's some wood in the way, maybe. It was, it was a roadblock, even though he took two shots at it with the wood. It's a nine. Now the final two boxes of the opening string. For Steve Ball. And there is our lob line judge and referee, Ralph Stewart. Look at the boots and the Argyle socks. Sartorially elegant. All right, first ball nets him seven. This is the fill on his strike. Now he's looking at two, four, six. Yes! Very pretty. He gets eight. Five and nine are the two pins still standing. Piece of wood to the right and one to the left. Too bad, he went right at it and uh, punched out the five, but did not get the nine. It's a nine box. And so Steve, with a league average of 112, comes on and under the pressure of appearing on uh, this television show for the first time, throws six pins better than his league average at 118. Paul has no wood to help as he is uh, now looking at two, four, and six. He took out the six, did not get the, the, excuse me, the three, of course. He didn't get the three to move over to get the four. It's a nine and a 119. As a spare leave, he's at 119. 127 is uh, his league average. He's looking now at 6 and 10 for a spare. Yes! 129 plus.
136. And another $50 in bonus money for winning that first string by the score of 136 to 118. Paul Berger now, after rolling a 136 opening string. And begins the middle string with a delayed action strike. I'll tell you, I hope that uh, you folks were watching last week because it was really something. Now, Phil Rubin, our producer, director, and I have been together a long time on this program, but I'll tell you, that was as exciting as you want as he just punched out two for the first ball. A 193 third string and a total of 500. The first 500 we've ever had on the program for Paul Berger. He just made the 1710, which were the three that were left at the end of the program. If he can do it again, it's worth $1,700 if it hasn't uh, already been done possibly by Steve, should Steve win. Four horsemen right side plus five and nine. Six pins. And everything went except the head pin. Almost the same lead, only he still has the seven pin up. But outside of that, he's got four horsemen right side plus five and nine. This time he gets the head pin, but the seven is still there. Ten. Paul looking at a triangle on the right. This is made up of the three, five, and six. Made it. the fill. It's got the head pin, then it jumps down to the four and the seven and eight, and the four is still there. Still has four horsemen on uh, the left side, plus five and eight. Five. Made it for the square. Seven as a fill, and a triangle on the left. Four, seven, and eight. Oh, 
too bad. After four boxes in the middle string right now, the score is Burger 52 and Ball 47. Our defending champion, Paul Berger, on the line now. A halfway point in the match. He leaves one pin right now, and that's the four pin. Ooh, that's most unusual. He missed it. Paul is married, father of two sons, works as a purchasing manager for Sun Microsystems. Representing both the Sudbury Bowl and the Viking Lanes in Bridgewater. Paul made his first appearance on our show back in 1976. And he's been in three championship shows. And this is his 43rd appearance in our regular, regularly scheduled noontime. Ten. All right, making his first appearance on our program is Steve Ball. And Steve mentioned that he only took up bowling three years ago. There's a guy I wanted to mention some time ago. He just never seemed to have the time. He took up uh, bowling nine years ago. And he bowls now in two leagues on Monday, two on Tuesday, another one on Wednesday, another one on Thursday. And uh, Bill Schreiberg just happens to be 89 years old. Bowling that much, that often. And never misses watching this show, and we appreciate that. Thanks for the note, Bill. Sorry to, I couldn't get it on earlier. Some contrasting boxes here by Steve Ball. He had rolled a four and then uh, in the fifth box and now rolls a strike in the sixth. One, two, four, nine, no wood. Two full on the head pin. Nine. Ball had five marks in the first string. He's had but two in the second. Last week in his phenomenal 500, he had 24 marks in 30 boxes, as those of you who are watching remember fondly. Here's another. A strike up there for our challenger today, making his first appearance on the program, Steve Ball. Ooh, he wanted the nine pin to go down because he has the four horsemen on the left side, plus that nine. Yes, played that very, very well. Because all of you know that a four horseman left side with a nine pin or an eight and uh, the reverse, it's very difficult. It's when it's in the opposite corner that it makes it that much more makeable. Let's put it that way. I won't say easy, but makeable. Just three. And there are still three pins standing. The five, seven, and nine. And he cleaned it up for a 10.
Paul Berger working on a spare. Gets five. Four horsemen, right side, seven pin over on the left. Now see if I'm right. I just said that it's more makeable. I didn't say it was easy. Nope, didn't make it. All right, now once again, he is faced with the one seven ten. Of course, he has two pieces of wood out there with the third ball. Not that time. It's an eight. pin and ten pin. There are two pieces of wood in front of the ten. He used the piece of wood to get the ten and had it come spinning over but it came spinning over behind the four rather than out far enough to get it. A 136 and a 113 so far. Now Steve Ball. One, three, four, and nine on the right, four, seven on the left. All right, pick up, pick up. One, four, seven, and nine still there. Good out, he got a nine. They are tied at the moment going into the, uh, that, that, that is going into the final box. And so, if he's going to win the string, he's got to try to pick up right now the three and the ten with wood. Got the 10. Now the three for a tie. Yes. So with the tie, at least uh, we split the bonus money at $25 a piece here. Each picks up 25. And the score right now, after two strings, is our defending champion Paul Berger with an 18 pin lead over our challenger Steve Ball, 249, 231. All right, third string, and our challenger, Steve Ball, Shrewsbury. First time on the program, leading off. <laughs> nice shot. Made the spare. That was not easy. That was an eight. And a 10 with wood in between. He played it perfectly. We mentioned at the start of the program that he is a salesman for Drake's goods, and he is single. Five is the fill. He's looking at three, six, 10 on the right. Piece of wood next to that, then four and seven. And he almost pulled it off. The only pin still standing is the four. He dropped that one too soon. It's a nine. Paul has a spare leave, two and four. And he made it. Eight. 
Eight is the fill. The two pins standing are the five and the seven. There's a piece of wood. It, whoa, it was in beautiful shape for a while there. Let's see. Now another one comes, and that's not so good because this is rolling right in front of it. More in a possible roadblock. Well, it's still moving around, so we won't say a word until they finally settle down. All right, he's going to fire at it right now. Made it. He was able to get by that piece of wood that was acting as a roadblock. It had rolled just far enough away so he could uh, come in there and kick the five and the wood over to get the seven. Our challenger, Steve Ball. Five pins standing. One, three, five, eight, and nine. And he made it. One, three, five, eight, and nine. Six is the fill. Side saddle triangle on the left side, made up of the two, five, and eight, and alone on the right, the ten. A little piece of wood in front of it. Oh, he brushed that ten, but it didn't go. Wow, he took out that triangle, which is not necessarily easy, and was able to fly a pin over there, and it just brushed by the ten, but didn't make it. He has picked it up for a ten. Paul Berger with a chance for more bonus money. Two marks in a row. Six is the fill. No wood to help. Three six on the right, four seven on the left. Boy, he almost pulled it off. He almost pulled it off. He throws that ball with so much steam and so much action on it that he's able to flip some of these pieces of felled wood and bounce them off the sidewall. In that case, he almost pulled the whole thing off. One, three, seven, and ten. No wood. Now it took the three and was unable to brush the one. Now it's one seven ten again that he's looking at with a third ball. Got the head pin. One, three, seven, and the piece of wood right alongside the one and three to the right. Yes. Spare in the fifth. is the fill. Now he's got three and seven. <clears throat> yes! He has two marks in a row. Paul Berger opposite, two spares. Let's see if he can do anything to answer. He's going to have to work on this one because he's looking right now at four and ten. It was a good effort. He banged off the sidewall and it shot across, but it went into the pit. So it's a ten. Now.
His lead down to 12. Opposite another mark. He almost had the strike. The one pin standing is the four. It rocked back and forth. Still standing. Now for the spare. Yes. So he's opposite a spare, and he still has a 12-pin lead. As we go to the final four. Five. It was all back door. He went to the right side, and what he has left is out front. He's got the three pin on the right, and then the four horsemen left side. He made it. Three marks in a row, $50 in bonus money for today's challenger. Steve Ball making his first appearance on our program. Seven. The two pin, then Wood, then the six and ten. Nope, didn't go. Ten. One ten with two boxes to go. as there was a pin loose. Now Paul Berger fires. He has left just the kingpin, the five. So nine is the fill. However, he's got a piece of wood that's not being very nice to him right now. wants that to be either out of the way or over to the right and, and let's see if he can sneak by there yes he did so he made the spare is the fill and he's left with a 610 to make and he has good wood yeah. he did not miss that so three marks in a row now for our defending champion now the final two boxes for Steve Ball today's challenger and Steve comes up with a strike in the ninth First bonus ball. That got him eight. He's got three and nine to pick up, and he has wood right in between them. Yes, he made it. All right, 140 plus this. <laughs> 140 and a rocking one pin standing, so it's a nine, 149. One forty-nine. Now Paul Berger comes up with a strike. Yeah. 
Another $50 in bonus money. Four marks in a row. Bravo! First ball gets him six and leaves him a split. Four, seven, six, ten. He has already won. And he makes it. For another $50 in bonus money, Paul has retained his title. He's at 149 right now. And of course, whatever he gets here will win him the string and give him another $50 in bonus money. 375. And Paul congratulating Steve on his first uh, appearance on our show as Paul comes up with a 154 in his final string opposite the 149. He picks up another $100 for going over 400 with his 403 and he wins the match over an excellent performance by Steve Ball making his first appearance on our show. 403 to 380. $250 in our home viewer jackpot. Our total is 783, both bowlers combined. And as you know, I'm going to draw a card here. I'm going to give 10 either side to that 783. And if it's within the 10 either side, that person will win the $250. If it's nowhere near that, just for having the card chosen, that person will receive a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company. If you want to get your card in here once again I'll give you the address you know it's just a card and your guess as to what the total pinfall will be your name and address and then send it along to Candlepin Bowling WCBB TV 5 TV place Needham Massachusetts zip code 02192 783 is our total let's see whether we have a winner or not of $250 if not then next week it's going to be worth 300 let's go way down in this corner here let's see what we can come up with This card is from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. And it's got the seven all right, but it's 731. So uh, we add another $50 next week. And now we have a high. You mean I didn't tell you who it was? Oh, unforgivable. From uh, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, Mr. Wallace Smith. Okay, fine. I'm just getting excited about this high-low jackpot here because it just keeps building and building and building up to $1,700 now, Paul. Steve, will you? Right here. Stand right here so the folks... They want to see you, not me, okay? Hey, listen, you did a great job. Thank first you. time on, roll to 380, get over the nervousness of the oh. first few boxes, eh? After the, few, after the first few boxes, I, don't, I get over that, but... Hey, we only gets uh, Paul Berg, I'll tell you. Hey, listen, you scared him a little bit when it came down to the third string and you started firing those things, I want to tell you. Well, there's your first permanent souvenir from Week's Trophy. And uh, to go along with that, let's see, we got 25 and then another 50, $75 in bonus money, $350. Now the first one's out of the way and you come back and see us again. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, Paul. I'm not going to say it was an easy one, no. <laughs> well, he's he's going to be a champ, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, only three years, huh? Yeah, he's been bowling, bowling for three years. He time. made some great shots. He, he sure certainly did. did. He's got a great future. Okay, you have, uh, let's see, $700 for winning, uh, $375 in regular, another $100, $475. Not bad, huh? And uh, $50 gift certificate for being marked for the day from Rotman's Furniture and Carpet Store of Worcester. And John Miller, a guy that you met a couple of times unsuccessfully, right? <laughs> okay, will be your challenger. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.